The purpose of this video is to talk about creating a synthesis matrix and what you can do with it once you're done. Uh, the purpose of a synthesis matrix is essentially to collect and aggregate in a meaningful way um, information from your sources because sometimes, you know, when you're reading all these sources as you're doing research and you find all sorts of information, um, sometimes it's hard to remember what information came from which source, especially if they're talking about a lot of similar ideas. Um, and sometimes it's also hard to kind of see like where the gaps are in your research um, and maybe identifying like redundant sources. Um, and essentially it helps you kind of look at all your research in one place and collect that information. So what you see here on your screen, if, if you can see this, the um, you notice there's a chart, and in the far left column, you see the phrases theme A, theme B, and theme C. I actually would call those topics, although a theme is probably fine, that feels very uh, literary, so I prefer the, the word topic. Um, and you don't have to have your rows being your themes or your topics. You can have your columns, that's how I'll set this up later. Um, but okay, so you notice that on the top row, uh, column two through five is um, source one, source two, source three, and source four. And then everything in the middle that's not the first row or the first column is all quotes and paraphrases that's from your sources. Okay, so in order to create this synthesis matrix, what you want to do is first gather your sources. And so I've got these examples here. I'm not going to show them to you, but you can always click on these links if you want later. Then create your synthesis matrix table. Then fill in your top um, row and fill in your left column. What I put in my top row were the different uh, themes or topics that my sources were talking about. So in my top row, and I'm starting in column two because I need column one for my sources. Um, in my top row, column two, I have the topic of escapism. And if, if you weren't paying attention, I picked um, Harry Potter as my, uh, like, why is Harry Potter amazing and great and awesome? That's my, that's my uh, study. I think that I would want to argue. So first um, I've got escapism, then I've got plot structure, then I've got characters or character development, and then I've got community or fandom. So there's four columns where I've got each of those topics, and then again all the way in the left hand column is where I would be listing um, like row by row the title and the author of my sources. And I've just listed the title here because I'm lazy and I'm only showing you two. You guys would have to have four, but I just wanted to give you a bigger version and I didn't have enough room on my screen. So here's the kind of the foundation of your synthesis matrix. You've got the topics that your sources cover and the source titles themselves. Um, then what you want to do is you want to fill in the details inside of your synthesis matrix. Now, I did not do this assignment in the way that you guys would, but I asked questions. Okay, so if you look at row two, column two, this is under the topic of escapism, and it's next to the um, source titled 20 Reasons Why Harry Potter is the Best There Will Ever Be. Now, um, the question I would answer in this box is what does 20 reasons why Harry Potter is the best I'll ever be say about escapism? Um, I can summarize that, I can paraphrase it, I can quote it. My suggestion though is that if you do provide quotes, which is fine to do in your synthesis matrix, make sure that you put quotation marks around it because otherwise you might end up plagiarizing later if you don't remember that it's a quote and you're working on your essay from your synthesis matrix. Um, the other thing that I'll say about this, uh, let's take a different example. So under the plot structure um, topic, next to the five secrets of good storytelling, if I'm asking the question, what does the five secrets say about plot structure? 
and it says nothing, I would just leave this box blank, okay? Um, for the purposes of your synthesis matrix for me, I would want you to tell me, you know, this, um, this source does not say anything about plot structure. Okay. If you have a ton of those boxes, pick different sources or pick different topics. I want to see a mostly filled out synthesis matrix, but it is going it's it's likely that you might have one or two boxes that you know your sources aren't saying anything about that topic and that's okay. Um, now, what do you do with it? So once you've created your synthesis matrix, how can this actually be helpful for you? What you've already done is created an outline for your essay. Um, remember those topics that I picked for the top row of my synthesis matrix? Uh, I would translate those into body paragraphs. So body paragraph one would be about escapism and what my sources have to say about escapism. Body paragraph two would be about plot structure. Body paragraph three would be about characters or character development. Body paragraph four would be about the community and fandom. I would have an introduction and a conclusion. And so a synthesis matrix is great because once I start to fill in those body paragraphs, all I have to do is go back and look at my synthesis matrix and say, okay, well, this source says this, and that's similar to what this other source says, which talks about this, but then this source says something a little bit different. Um, and so technically what you're doing is you're synthesizing literature and you're writing a literature review, but in a much more... Um, manageable way and in a less scary kind of way as well. So uh, that's information on synthesis matrix. If you have any questions, please let me know.